In the Data Map app, we'll use the Map component in App Inventor to visualize data on a map. If you open up the template, you'll see that it comes with two files already in there. The first one is what's called a comma-separated values file, a CSV file, and it's a way to read in a spreadsheet of data. Here's what the spreadsheet looks like. You'll see that for each state, there's a whole bunch of data. Notice that the states are in alphabetical order here, and that in each column, there's some data. For example, is population, um, death by firearms rate, and so on. These are all from the CDC and census.gov websites. The second data file here is what's called a GeoJSON file, and this contains geographic information. It's a little bit harder to read, but you'll see that each state is in here um, with a whole bunch of features for that state. And what's really important here is the list of coordinates, and this is what draws a polygon on the map for that state. Um, so let's use these files. First of all, we need a map component. And I've already added a label here, which you should add. Um, let's make the width of the map fill the parent, and let's make the height 50% of the screen. Right now it's centered at MIT, um, but we would like it to be centered in the middle of the United States. So here is the latitude and longitude for Oklahoma City, which is kind of in the middle. So if you copy that in to the center from string property here, now we're in Oklahoma City. But we want to zoom out some, so let's make it zoom level 3. And now we can see the whole map. But we don't see the state outlines yet. For that, we need a feature collection. And so notice that these are a whole bunch of polygons and things like that. And you can either cut and paste some JSON in here or have a source, a file here, okay. And after a couple seconds, it will draw all those polygons from that map on here. If you click on one, you can see the latitude and longitude points it put in. Be very careful though, because if you move them around, it's really hard to put them back. So the last thing we need in here is under storage, a file, and this is for that data file down here. And if you actually click on it, you can highlight it and do control C to copy it because you're going to need this file name exactly to open it. So let's go to the blocks. So in the blocks, what we want to do is set up a variable called data. And this is going to read in that whole data file. So let's set it to empty list right now. When the screen initializes, we want to open that file. So come down to the file here, and we want to read from the file. You can use um, files for input or output, but here we're just using input, and we need to give it the file name exactly. So you can control V to put that file name in, but right before it, you need to type in slash slash two forward slashes, and that tells it to go to the device's memory that you're using and read the file from there. Remember when the app downloads it to your device, um, it, all of that information will go into the device memory, in, including this media file. Reading, reading from a file is a two-step process. So once you say go off and read it, it will trigger a got text event handler once it finishes reading the file and it will put everything it read into this text argument. So what we want to do is save that in our global data, um, but we need, to, need it in a specific list structure. So if you go down to the list drawer, there's a whole bunch of blocks here dealing with CSV files. Um, so you could get just one row of information or the whole table of information. You want this very last block. So you want to say, read in this whole table of um, information from the spreadsheet and make it into a list. And what it will do is it will make a list of each row. And each row itself will be a list as well. Um, so it, it's a complex data structure, very abstract. Um, that's called a list of lists. 
So we have a list of states and each state is its own list um, where the first thing in the list is the state name, then its population, and so on. Um, so notice though in the data file, the very first row is just the column headers. So we don't want that row because um, we just want to read in each state's row and then display it on the map. So we can remove that first row. Back in the list um, blocks, there's a remove list item. And we can remove from this data list the very first row, which is row one. Now we're ready to process the rest of the list of states. And for that, we want a loop. You can e either use a for each number loop or for each item in list. I'm going to use the for each number because the index of the list is going to be actually very useful for us. And I'm going to rename this number index. And we want to go from one to the length of the list. Now there's actually two different lists though that are parallel. So there's this list of data that's in order by, by state, right? There's also the list of states here, the feature collections, and that is also in order by state, okay? So they're parallel lists, which really makes our job a lot easier. They're in exactly the same order. So we can go through e either list and then get the data from the file and put it on the map. Um, so let's grab a length of list block here. And you could go through either list, but let's go through the feature collection list. So if you click on feature collection here, you'll see that there, the first green block is called feature collections features. And if you point to it, it'll tell you it's the list of features placed on the map. So this would get us every state that we've drew on the map. Um, at this point, it's a good idea to set up two local variables so that we keep our two lists straight. Um, so for the first local variable, I'm going to call it state feature. This will be one of the states from the map, from the feature collection list. So let's do a select and select that list item from the feature collections from this list using the index from the loop. So what this is going to do is our loop is going to go through each of these states in the feature collections, right? So the first time through the loop, the state feature is going to be Alabama. The second time through the loop, it'll pull out the second item from the feature collection features list, Alaska. Third time through the loop, state feature will be Arizona, and so on. So that will get us each feature on the map. Let's do another local variable. But this time, let's call it state data. And this one will be from the other list, not the features on the map, but the data list that came from our spreadsheet. So this will say, OK, so now get me the data, this list for Alabama, then for Alaska, then for Arizona, and so on. So this will be index one, this will be index two. Now it's really important once you get this list to um, know how to get the information out of it. So the columns are going to indicate to you which index it is. To get the state name, we want index 1. To get the population, we want index 2, and so on. So we want to display that information on our map. Um, so if we, we could use different blocks here to display that information with enable info box and the title and the description. But since this is more abstract, we're going through a loop. You want to come down to the any component blocks down here and find the any polygon blocks. So this will be very more abstract. Whichever block, whichever state you've chosen, um, you want to set its description and its title. And the very first thing you want to do is enable this info box so that it will pop up a box with the title and the description. 
So the component that you want here is the state feature. That's the one that's on the map. And first of all, you want to enable the info box to true. Um, if you duplicate this, then let's set the title. So let's set as title. to something from the spreadsheet. So the title is probably a good idea to just put the name of the state. And remember that's on column one. So we can use one of these select blocks. But what we wanna look in this time is the state data. So we got one row of information that's in state data. And we want index number one because that will get us the name of the state. So that'll be the title. And then in the description, you can decide what data you want to put in the description. Um, I'm just going to get column two, which remember is just um, the population here of that state. Um, but just the number alone um, would be confusing for the user. So let's join that and put the word population in front of it so the user knows that that's the data that you're actually displaying. So now when I click on a state, it will pop up the name of the state and its population. And now we are actually displaying some data on the map. In the extensions, the projects for this project, um, you can color code these states so that it shows um, more data or less data. And you can also use an API to display the weather information about the state and some information down here in a web viewer as well. So have fun.